Hi everyone, Rubber Mold Man here, finally doing my uh, follow-up video on how to detail paint a concrete pelican statue. I apologize for taking so long when we uh, started uh, doing the videos last year and uh, putting up our website last year. I had no clue how busy we were going to get all of a sudden uh, and we weren't quite prepared for it. So we've been taking the last few months uh, getting on top of orders and changing our business around so that we can uh, now take more orders and I'm also going to get back to my videos now. And This is the video I've literally received hundreds of emails asking when this second video is going to be done so I apologize for the wait but starting with this video now I'm going to be doing two or three videos per month on different painting techniques, a few more tips on how to use the rubber molds to make the statues so if you're interested in that go ahead and subscribe I'll have tips on how you can make your own business making statuary uh, all sorts of things. I've been doing it my entire life my family's been doing it since the late 60s so we have a lot of information we want to share and I think you'll be surprised at just how easy it is to make statues like this from scratch and paint them up all sorts of different ways. So subscribe if you like that. And don't forget my website, rubbermoldman.com. That's where you can go and see a lot of my molds that I sell. I'll also have up-to-date information as far as where you can find my molds to purchase other than my website. A lot of people like to purchase them on eBay. And I've got a couple people that usually sell for me on eBay, so it'll have their information as well. Okay, so let's get to the uh, pelican. Now, in my first video, I got it up to about this point here. I showed how to do the body and everything. The only thing I've done since that uh, first video is underneath here, in this particular pelican, it had some, uh, what I assume is supposed to be fisherman's net under the uh, body of the pelican there. Of course, it, you know, it can't be hollow there. The statue wouldn't support itself. So uh, they always have some sort of filler there. Usually it's grass or rocks or something. In this case, I assume that is fisherman's net. So I went ahead and did an antique finish on that using the dry brush technique that I showed in another video. And I just did kind of a pale yellow and then went over it with an even lighter version of the pale yellow. I don't want it to really stand out, but I don't want to leave it unpainted. So I went ahead and took care of that. And I also touched up the black on the beak. I had some of the white from when I was uh, dry brushing the body. Um, normally I wouldn't worry about that because when I paint over the beak it would uh, cover the white. I just I've noticed this latest batch of paint I have, the uh, some of the colors aren't near as good as they were in the past and it's kind of smeary and wasn't painting as good. I usually have to do two coats with it now. So I went ahead and touched up the black so I don't have to worry about painting over the white at all. Alright, so we're going to start with the beak and the feet here. And I've got this kind of broken up in steps so you don't have to sit through an entire video of watching every single step. We'll just do a little at a time. What I have here are uh, some kind of Halloween orange paint, some dark brown paint, and later we'll use some of that white paint. But what I do for the beak, one thing with animals, you don't want to make them too realistic looking because they usually don't look right, but you also don't want to make them cartoony looking. Now a lot of people I see with pelicans will do the beak like a bright yellow or a super bright orange. That just doesn't look right. I go somewhere in the middle. What I do is I start with a base coat of mixing some of this dark brown with some of the orange. I'm kind of getting a, kind of a rust color. Now. A lot of times I'll, uh, and I apologize for the uh, cheaply brush here, I've left my good brushes at the shop, so I'm using some craft brushes, but they'll work. I uh, will use the dry brush technique usually, I'll try to get here so you can see, and I'll usually try to go back and forth across the uh, detail in it there so some of the black shows through. However, like I said, this paint just isn't as good as real smeary and isn't going on as good, so I'm doing it more of a solid uh, finish here and so this you basically just follow the lines like a paint by number just so like a three-dimensional paint by number just go ahead and paint that orange in there and I know that isn't the uh, prettiest orange but we're gonna do something to make it pop out here in a little bit so just hang on but anyway you do the entire beak like that and like I said in this case I would probably wait for that to dry after a couple minutes and go over it again because I don't know if you can tell in the video but this is cruddy paint it's just not um, going over the, the good stuff usually we'll, we'll do it in one coat this I'm having to do it in two and uh, I was just trying a cheaper brand I found at the store and again if you haven't watched my other videos this is just acrylic latex paint nothing special you just get acrylic latex paint it's water based easy to work with but again you just go ahead and do the whole beak the orange like that and then on the legs, see if I can get to where you can see on the legs here, most bird uh, statues will have a bit of texture in the feet and legs. So what I do is uh, kind of go against that texture to let some of the lines of it show through. 
I'm not worried about getting it perfect, just kind of touching it up here. I'm not worried about the toenails there because that's going to be painted a different color. But again, we just go down, got a little paint there, I'll just wipe that off. Just kind of fill in. And again, with this dry brush and uh, antique type finishing, even with detailing, you don't have to get every nook and cranny. That's the nice thing about it. You just kind of touch it up and it looks like it's fully painted even though it's not. So you see that there, let some of the black show through. Okay, now I'm not going to take the time to do the whole bit on this pelican. I've got another one with the next step, but you, you see how simple that is. You just go over it. Trick is not have a ton of paint on the brush. Keep it. That's why I have the cardboard there so I can wipe it off as needed. So this isn't fully the uh, dry brush technique that I've taught before, but it's kind of the similar thing. Not as much paint on your brush uh, as you normally would and just cover the whole thing uh, with the orange. All right, so let's get rid of this pelican for now and bring in the next step. Now this is one I already had done. Now, I did this one a little darker. It's more of a brown type finish, but you should be able to see there on the video. So what I'm going to do is uh, highlight this just a bit to brighten it up. So going back to my paints, I'm going to take a little bit more brown there since this is more of a brown color than the orange. Put some brown in there. Then I'm going to take a dab of that white and get some lighter color here. Maybe just a touch more of that orange. Okay. Now for this I want it fairly dry on my brush. I want to do a pretty good dry brush. So we're going to wipe off most of that excess there. Now on pelicans, as you know, they have that great big mouth that opens up. But in this particular pelican, he's all folded up. Uh, most pelican statues, uh, that saggy part of their beak will be folded up to some degree, but it's usually a different color. Now again, we're not going for total realism here, but I want to highlight that part of it. So I'm just going to kind of dry brush over what would be the folded up part of the uh, big billowy sack part of his beak. And you see how that just kind of makes that part stand out now. It's not a drastic change in color but just enough to make it obviously uh, different than the rest of the beak. And like I said, we're just using the dry brush there, so we're not going for total coverage of the uh, section there. Just kind of brushing it on, let the, the uh, detail of the piece do the work for us. So we got that on there. And then you know what? The front of the beak looks kind of bland, so why don't we take this, and there's a bit of definition going up and down in the piece, so let's go back and forth just a little. Uh, again, I don't know how well this is going to show up on the video, but what it's doing is just giving a little bit of texture, a little too much there, a little bit of texture to that beak without going as much as the back part there, okay? And you see when there's so little paint there, if you get a little smudge, just use your finger and wipe it off in a biggie. I'm trying to get this to where the shadows aren't in your way. Okay. So you should be able to see now a difference on the beak already. We've got the darker part up front down here. Again, you can make this a little oranger if you like. Um, you, if you look at uh, pictures of actual pelicans, they're not very colorful birds for the most part. They're kind of grayish and brownish in that. So I try to uh, find that medium point. I don't make them cartoony, but I don't make them too realistic. Um, and you'll find that's a theme with a lot of the painting I'll, I'll be doing, is finding what people assume they look like. All right, with that same light color, Go ahead and grab this over here. With that same light color, I'm also going to dry brush some highlights over the legs and feet because they have that texture in them, but they look kind of bland as that. I don't, are you zoomed in there? Okay. So we're going to just kind of, again, go over the legs there. Real simple and easy. It just the texture of the statue is basically pulling off the little bit of paint that's on the brush. And now, just doing that, we have a nice two-tone effect. Well, three-tone if you count the black under it. But it really makes it look uh, like there's a lot more detail. And all I did was brush over with some of the light paint. Let's do another one real quick. Get some of that lighter color. And we just kind of lightly dust, like you're dusting, not painting. You're dusting. There's a little coat of dust on here. You want to get that dust off. That's the feeling we're going for. You just kind of brush it over lightly like that. 
And look at that. Just makes those uh, webbed feet pop out now. Really simple to do. Okay, let's move on to the next step then. Because he's almost done. Uh, he Here's a little trick I will show you on pelicans and certain birds like this. That same color I was just using. This might seem weird, but just uh, bear with me. You can also take some over his eyes here that are in the white. Put some there and then just use your finger or something. Just kind of smush it so it's kind of mushy there. I know it looks ugly now, but just wait. We'll do a little bit over here on that eye. Smush that in. Just kind of make it look a little stained there. Okay. So at this point, we'll move on to the next one, and it's just really just finishing steps of the next level here. Move that over just a bit. So, next step. Here you see the beak has the two-tone here. I dusted a little bit on here just to go. Uh, the next step I guess I would have done is put on the toenails down there, which is, I just use straight gray paint. You can use a dark brown, a gray, you can even use black. Just a dark color. That, doesn't pop out. They're just there as part of the pelican. You don't want them to be the focus of the pelican. So I did gray there. Super easy. Just use a little brush and put them on there. It takes all of a minute to do the legs, if even that. Then on the other pelican, you saw what I did with the eyes there with that stain. Now you see how it makes the little eyes pop out. They really are noticeable now because it's not this little eye on the white and back black ground like the rest of the pelican. You have this uh, little eye on this kind of stain area here. And real pelicans, they're actually uh, that's uh, a normal color for them, like that usually their whole belly is kind of stained. And you can actually do that. What I did there on the eyes, if you wanted to take the time to do the whole belly and do kind of a, a yellowish stain under there the same way you can, uh, I just find they don't make a difference for uh, purchases for the customers. So other than the eye, and I'm not going to show you the eye in this video, I'm actually going to do a whole video about uh, tips on how to do eyes, but just so you know, all I did was went back over the circle of the eye, painted it white, then I did a brown circle then a smaller black circle, and then I put a little white dot. I just used the back side of the brush and put a little white dot. It's a small eye, it doesn't need much detail, but if you can zoom in there, you can see how those uh, three little dots make it look perfectly fine as an eye. Is it a realistic pelican eye? No, it's just a standard circle dot eye that I use on most of my detailed statuary, and it works fine. You can use different colors if you want. You can give it blue eyes, green eyes, uh, but again, I'm trying to make it kind of a dulled down looking pelican. So at this point, that pelican would be done. It's mostly white. Now I let a lot of the black show through so it really shows the feathers and the texture. But uh, they sell at my shop for about 50 to 60 dollars just like this. So when you count that this statue probably cost all of a dollar, dollar fifty in material to make and then a few paints and my time to paint it, and I'm able to sell it for fifty to sixty dollars. Heck, even selling it for twenty-five to thirty is huge profit. And that's why I tell people this is a great business to get into. You just need to learn a few little tricks to make nice statuary like this compared to the really poorly painted stuff you see elsewhere. I'm going to show you one more thing though, because we're not quite done. Let's say you want to take this to the next step, make this even more detailed. I'm going to show you one more pelican. Now look at that one. This is the exact same pelican that the others were, painted the exact same way. The only difference is at the very end, I went and put some black all along the bottom layers here of each of the layers of feathers. Most pelican statues I've ever made and seen will have definite lines of feathers coming down. So I just went and used black, and then I used a dark brown and I leave, you leave it darker at the bottom and then you go with a light dusting of the dark brown and then make it a little lighter up here just to give it a bit of definition. Super easy. Took all of a minute or two extra to do that. But you see the difference there. I'll put these two side by side here. Again, exact same pelican. Uh, just a little bit different to where you get a completely different look from the two. But they are extremely detailed looking now with relatively little work. Uh, they look like a master artist has painted them, but you've seen the videos now. It's not a, any great skill that's needed. It's uh, the, the statue does the work for you. All that texture in that pulls the paint off. You just have to learn those little tricks. But isn't that a beautiful piece? And that, that's just one of hundreds of pieces that I have that I uh, do different finishes. Now, a lot of them I do the detail finishes like this. 
but the majority of them I do a uh, different style of antique finishes where they're not detailed but they'll have like stone finishes or they're made to look like ivory or marble. I'll be doing videos about all of that, so go ahead and subscribe if you're interested. Uh, don't forget my website again, rubbermoldman.com. Uh, that will have a lot of my molds. Uh, that's my main business online is selling the molds that make these. For instance, this mold I believe is uh, right around 200, 225, um, which is actually a good price on a mold this size. However, if you contact me through the uh, website and mention that you saw this video and you would like this mold, I'll give you a little break on it. But you have to mention that you saw this video. Um, and I guess that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I will, will be doing more videos coming up soon. I think the next one I'm going to show how to paint a large manatee statue from beginning to end because I can paint that whole thing in about five minutes flat. So I'll show you folks how to do that. And then I'll just be picking different statues again like every uh, two to three weeks. So I hope you enjoyed it. I uh, hope you learned some tips here to help you in your statuary business or your hobby. And uh, please subscribe and come back for more. Thanks and have a great day.